I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus. Thanks for coming. Thank you for involving yourselves in what is happening. The preacher's name is Ranyaga Enos. The Kapele of Jesus. Together with Mrs. Mugisha. And Patrick. Ye Richard. Ye Richard. We are going to minister to you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let us sit. We are in the month of prayer and fasting. Which we believe that each individual of us is going to reach somewhere in the Lord. We welcome every minister. Thank you for coming. It takes dedication opening up yourself so that you can gain. But the Lord is open to hear everyone's prayer. I thank God for the opportunity given to me from the pastors that they thought that I could also speak something to you. I welcome all of you online. The Kapele of Jesus greets you all. Those over the radio, we greet you all. May the Lord bless us all. Lord, I, th Lord, I thank you for, the, for your grace this evening. We pray that you cover us. I and my fellow ministers. Come in this, this, in this congregation. And wherever the congregation is in the nation. Whoever is in this service. And your name be glorified. Holy Spirit will welcome you. Be our strength. And our wisdom. Give us words to speak. In Christ Jesus we've prayed. Amen. Amen. Uh, we are on a theme. We are on a theme. Cut your old dirty song at dead divorce. Overcoming spiritual nations. Kusande. On Sunday. Our pastor taught us of these nations. Deuteronomy chapter 7. From verse 1 and we look at these nations. He taught us the meaning of every nation. That is where I'm going to move from. I won't speak about this nation. I will speak of what comes out of the nations. Manji, Omukiti, Omugirugasi, Omuamori, Omukanani, Omperizi, Omukivi, Nomuyebusi. Amawanga musamvu aga kusingo bukuru na amani. Soma. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 1. When the Lord thy God shall bring you into the land which you go to possess, you shall cast out all the nations before you, the Hittites, the Gagashites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than you. These nations they were more powerful than Israel. 
Era katonda abagamba yi agendo bayingiza okuliya mawanga ago. And the Lord is telling them that he is the one taking them to possess those nations. Okusinzira kokuyiga ko twayiga ku Sunday. According to what we learned on Sunday. Olwale rofe tutobana mawanga. Today we do not struggle with nations. Tutobane balazawe. But we struggle with their character. Bichibye bakolanga. The things that they did. Febye tutobana byo. That is what we struggle with. Olwale re kanisa. Today the church is struggling with the Canaanites. But the character of the Canaanites. If it is dealing with the Amorites, we do not have the Amorite nation today. But the fruit of the Amorites are still present. The Jebusites, their fruit are also still present. The nations were destroyed in person. Physically, there is no land called Canaan. And neither is the Jebusites. But their fruit are still present. They are the ones we strive with. So when we speak of overcoming nations, you will look out for nation after nation and their character. And then you examine yourself. Which nation is reigning in you? If that nation is still reigning, and yet it is mightier than you, that even if you rise up to fight, it overcomes you. Not because you don't know what God said. That destroy. Destroy them utterly. Do not make a covenant with them. But yet this nation is mightier than you. This month. That is what we want to attack. That is what we want to attack. We want to complete this month. When you feel that which was overcoming you, that you have overcome it now. When you're mightier than it, when you have utterly destroyed it, and it can no longer reign in your life, and even in your children, it is you to overcome it. Praise the Lord. When we see the Jebusites, for them they walked in the spirit of immor sexual immorality. Today, you can't find a Jebusite physically and you fight with them. But if the spirit of adultery or fornication worked within them, I don't know if you know how this spirit reigns and how this spirit has overcome the children of God. Not because we do not know the truth. We know the truth. Even we try to fight because we have been trained. But whenever this spirit rises up, to fight, it overcomes you. It overcomes us. We need to rise against that spirit. It has cast down many great men. Even those that are anointed. Even those that are called. Even those that are Nazarites. Right from the beginning up to today, this spirit reigns. Praise the Lord. This spirit existed even before the Jebusites were. So it means the nature or the character of the Jebusites came before the Jebusites. So what we are fighting against is strong. It has been there for long. And it is still going on forward. Praise the Lord. The Perizzite spirit. It works in killing visions. 
Visions. The Bible says in Proverbs 4.23 that without a vision men perish. You cannot stop yourself. You cannot be able to do anything as long as you get a vision. Now this parasite spirit it kills visions. And it knows very well that when you are not seeing where you are going it will be able to make you do whatever it wants you to do. So when the vision is dead, the children of God will do everything. Remember we have an, a vision to inherit the promised land. But this nation or this spirit works against killing that vision. When you no longer think about it and no lie. Why the people of the world do whatever they do is because they have no vision of eternal life. They know it. When I die, all is done. There is nothing else. Now such a person who doesn't know that there is eternal life and yet it is going to come through the judgment seat. Today they do whatever they do uh, with all their might. Not knowing there is a life after this one. Even as the children of God when this spirit cuts off our vision it has strangled us and it will make us do whatever it will take us of course you will lack the right way to take it will show you that any way you want to take is okay but you have to rise against the spirit. You must walk having a vision. You must very well know where I'm going, what is there, what will enable me to get there so that I start to prepare today. Praise the Lord. The Canaanite spirit the proud spirit. There is a spirit of greed. Greed of things. Praise the Lord. Like the pastor taught us spirit by spirit. You must go back and look keenly in your life. The Hittite spirit. It was very well taught. Works with fear. A lot of fear is in us. Praise the Lord. I doubt if there is anyone bold enough. All of us are full of fear. The marriage are full of fear. We produce children. When you bath three. And you're like, if I add more children, how will I pay school fees for them? What will they eat? That is all fear. Fear takes you away from the will of God. And you are unable to do the will of God anymore. When you are looking at your own ability, knowing you cannot, and then you give up. Praise the Lord. The spirit of fear. The Gagashite spirit. It, speak, it, 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 it deals with backsliding. Backsliding. 
I don't know if the level when you got saved from the fire that you had I don't know if it is still the same fire you carry today if it were the same fire you carry today I don't know how you would have been every time you backslide every time we backslide all the previous things we used to do, we embark on them. You find yourself redoing the habit you had left. Backsliding. It was a full nation working on the backsliding of Israel. Today it is in us. You can't explain. What cut your fire? You would come to church. Never missing any service. Being in every overnight. Involving yourself in every fast. Today you fast inquire. What are we fasting for? I don't feel it. But the other time you would not inquire at all. Something made us to backslide. The level at which you were reading from the scripture. If that level remained. Today you would be far in ministry. But something makes us to backslide unknowingly. It works night and day. Praise the Lord. It works day and night. The Amorite spirit. It is the spirit of pride. 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 Pride is something you walk with unknowingly. And when you're amidst pride. And you confess. Me, I'm humble. I am humble. I walk in humility. And yet pride is hiding in the inside of us. Get something small. Or uh, maybe you're praised. Or maybe you're exalted. You will describe and know that you have pride. I look at people. Having a certain department they lead. But you can see how they exercise their authority. Over those he leads. When it is even greater than the authority of the pastor. And then you can tell him pastor said. Do this. And he says. Let me first tell my leader. You leader. Why did you get that pride from? That even a word from the bishop. approved by you. Has to be approved by you. That is pride. Praise the Lord. It is in Amidist. The Canaanites. Material wealth. Things. We need material things. I know how you need a car. Even how you need a house. And even how you need to gather some property and manifest your God. But if those material things get into something of desiring and yearning for them, you get, of course. We have lost so many ministers. We have lost mighty ones. Because of the love of things. In chapter 73. Of Psalms. There is a man who was a choir leader. In the days of David. Asaf. Asaf. He says that I almost backslid. He reached a moment when the way he was desirous for material wealth 
God. He was looking at those that do not fear God. And he said, now why am I doing these things? Men have reached a level of denying God because of the love of things. God knows it that we need these things. But he does not want us to love them. He has many channels and a time when he will give you those things. But every time you desire, you start to do things your own way. You start to do things in your own understanding. And you invest in a lot of strength. But the way you invest that strength, they sway you away slowly. Away from God. And the more you get away from God, every time you get away from God, Wait, the next thing is for you to sin. Praise the Lord. John chapter 6. Verse 16. John chapter 6. We are going to see a solution. About overcoming these things. Because they are no longer physical, they are now spiritual. For us, we can't. They are mightier than us. I'm going to reveal unto you one solution. And if you walk in this solution, you will overcome. Praise the Lord. Verse 52. Verse John chapter 6 from verse 52 to 54. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whosoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21. They speak of the birth of Jesus and the role he's going to do. And she shall give birth to a son and shall call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. Yes. Jesus came to save men from their sins. But these sins they have nations behind them. Depending on the Old Testament in Deuteronomy these nations they sold their seeds in Israel. And for them they perished. But their seed remained in Israel within. And then it became a sin in which Israel lived. Israel walked in sin that was sold by the other nations. And it needed someone to come. And save Israel from that sin. This time, he had to serve from inside. Amen. God used to fight with his nation in the physical. But this time, the battle had to be secretive. And it was within 
fighting the nations within you. But remember these nations are mightier than you. You know how you made an oath that I will never commit this sin again. But you find yourself doing it again. And then you say again, I will never do it again. And again you do it. How long will you do that? How long will you repent for? You need someone to enter within you. There where that seed was sown. And then it be uprooted. One day, and you feel within you, in me, that there is no longer something arising. That someone who was, so with, uh, who was driven with the love of material wealth, you are letting go of material wealth. And it goes. And you feel you are okay with what you have. Praise the Lord. If you have a seed of the love of material wealth, in you there is no strength to overcome it. And if you try to fight by yourself, they will overcome you. We will find you moving nation after nation. I'm looking for material wealth. I've gone to Dubai. I've gone to Turkey. Now I'm back to Juba. Now I've gone to Rwanda. South Africa is where there is money. And yet you have such a great call. You have such a great ministry the Lord expects you to do. And another thing you're going to miss out on life eternal. Many people have loved money and things. Some have got them. But yet their relationship with God died long ago. And even when he comes to church, he just sits as a normal member. Praise the Lord. Some even ask what is happening. And material things sat in the place of God. And then the mystery of salvation perishes. He feared how he will overcome in 10 years ahead. Which even he doesn't know whether he will be alive. And then he cast away the mystery of salvation. And now today he's, he's being tossed to and fro from here to there with great disappointment. And every time he tries to arise and come back to church, in the very church, that is where there is a voice. And then the voice is asking him, how are you going to pay school fees for that child at university? The child who is two years old. What will you use to pay for him school fees? And then he goes back out to seek for money for school fees at the university. The time he would spend at church, and then it dies. Praise the Lord. You need Jesus. Yes, Jesus, this world, the Bible says it was created by him. And whatever is in heaven and on earth, it was created for him. But he left all those things. You need this man who left all the wealth. And he desired to do the will of God to sit in your heart. And you overcome that love of wealth. When Jesus will sit on our inside, you will feel that the love of money and wealth is perishing, it is melting away. And the hunger and thirst for God, it will rise again in you. And you will do your first works. You need Christ. You need Jesus to sit in our inside. He that overcame pride. 
In Philippians 2 He's spoken of that Have this mind The attitude which was in Christ Who was in the image of God But considered it not As a point to hold on But he took up of all those glories and took upon himself the nature of a servant and he came on the nature of man he broke whatever is called pride and entered the lowest level of humility of being a servant praise the Lord and then he reached that level the king the creator of all and became, and became a servant of a sinner and Jesus was here Christ in him God himself had become a servant of men if you want to overcome pride some of the nations we read about you need the seed of Christ within you you cannot overcome pride by yourself because pride comes by birth it is a nature you were born with but you need Christ who overcame pride Praise the Lord. You need Christ who overcame fear. He was even not scared of all the terror of the heads. He looked at the cross. And he looked at those who were going to follow him. And even their tools. And then he said, I will go to the cross. And then he went. And he was crucified. But he remained bold. What they were seeking for from him. Is to put fear within him. So that he can confess that I am not the son of God. He put on boldness. Perhaps you want to do certain things. But you have fear. One day I was told to pass a church. And I was fearful. And I didn't go there. Maybe today I would be a pastor of a church. But because of fear. I was withheld. I don't know when I'll take on boldness. Or maybe this month the Lord will help me. And I'll be bold. But I'll, I'll, I may become bold and yet the chance is no more. Today maybe you feel like doing something. And there is a voice on your heart. You still have the conviction. You still feel the burden. And the desire to do it. But because of fear. When you still feel that at heart. You need Christ to enter within you and you get the boldness and you start on doing before that voice dies. Because when that voice dies the next thing is judgment. Praise the Lord. Adultery. Adultery. Praise the Lord. I don't know right from the beginning up to today this spirit reigns it doesn't mind the level that you're at but we need to overcome it it is mightier than us maybe you left fornication when the man tells you you tell him I'm saved Praise the Lord. And indeed you're saved. Naye. But. Naye. But. He telling you. It is you who placed the situation that caused it. When inside of your heart something arose. And you said within you, I wish this was my man. 
Mukusala asala amagezi. And then in devising means. Gote wamanya ato inacho sumurud. You didn't know that you had released something. Na alumba. And then he comes. Na yoru okutia. But because of fear. Okuchikola mubuliwo. To do it physically. Na lokoka. You say I'm saved. Yesu. Jesus. Mumata esule yokutan. In Matthew 5. Ayogera kubwenzo we chikecha wa guru we tutasomula na kuwangula. He speaks of the highest level of adultery which we cannot overcome. Adultery within the thoughts. You've looked at the woman. You've lasted after her. You've desired her. You've already committed adultery. No one can overcome such adultery. That one. In our own strength and power. No one can overcome it. We need Christ. Christ who overcame adultery. He was born in a wicked generation. When darkness had covered the earth. He was born in a time when everyone was doing whatever they desired. But he overcame. And the nature of the world did not consume him. He reached 30 years of age. I was thinking about Jesus. If the creation of everything is in him, even the power that is against us the power that is against us within us. Disturbing us. The power that is disturbing us. He gave it to us. He created it for us. He picked from his power. And gave unto every man. The owner of the power. The source of it. He kept it. Right from 15 years of age. Or maybe from when he was in the womb. Up to 30 years of age. And even added three more years. When he was not overcome. He is the owner of the power. What is disturbing us? That forbids us from sleeping. He just picked from his. Praise the Lord. And this. Scarce. And this very little. It is, it is very little. Don't you hear people selling medicines? Isn't it on market? Why? But there is why it is in eternity. He was with it here on earth. But he didn't do anything. One day. Chance. He got a chance. In John chapter 4. And met this adulterous woman. This woman. If you want to understand her. Go and read uh, Proverbs chapter 7. This woman is a schemer. She is wise. She got many took them into her net. When Jesus was there, tired, the sun is shining and he's at the well. There comes this woman and comes to him. Do you think this woman had come for water? She had come for Jesus. She was such a scheming woman. She can use anything to overcome a man. And the Bible says that all the foolish they have entered her net. As Jesus was there, she came. But Jesus saw that this woman had not come for water. And then he spoke to her first. When Jesus spoke to her first, the woman could no longer use her schemes. But she was walking on the power of Jesus. You need Christ. The seed that was not overcome by the spirit, by the spirit of adultery. 
When it enters us, adultery gets out. And you are no longer disturbed. That which was rising, whenever it's, what it wants to rise, the power to overcome it is still within you. Praise the Lord. As we are in this man, I introduce you Christ. Who is going to help you overcome every nation disturbing you? Whatever is disturbing you, he overcame it. He was in the flesh. The flesh that grew up from the body of a woman. Which was created from the womb of a woman. But it overcame. He overcame. The seed which was in him. When he says eat of my flesh. That seed comes along. That seed comes along. And whoever accepted to eat his flesh, those are his disciples who accepted the seed. They reached a time that when the heavens would look at them, they would see Christ himself. Praise the Lord. All the struggles you've done, a time has come. Bring in Christ. When Christ enters, we will not struggle. He himself will be our strength in which we used to overcome. They have said that these nations are mightier than us. The adultery you're fighting with came before you. The spirit of the love of money and wealth came before you were born. And the things are mightier than you. But Christ, all of them, they are under his feet. Do you want to put things under your feet? Do you want to put pride under your feet? Do you want to walk when you're fearless? You need Christ. He will lead you. And whatever you could not do, you will be able to do it. Whatever you were hearing as if it is far from you, you will get them. Hebrews 10. When Mr. Mutunzi was teaching, he taught about this matter and I felt good. Verse 35. Verse 35. Kubanga mweta go kugumi kiriza. Be muli malokola katonda via yagala. Muli okumu wewe chasu visible. Hebrews 10 35 36. Cast not away therefore your confidence, which has a great recompense of reward. For you need to have patience that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Come here, Praise the Lord. Echimu kucho ino kukristo chagendo kuwa. One of the things that Christ is going to give to you is the fruit of patience. Praise the Lord. God knows it. And he speaks in Matthew 6 that hey, don't be worried. Do not be worried about things. First of all, I know that you are in need of them. Even before you pray. God knows whatever you need. He, he knows what you need 30 years from today. That if you live for more 30 years, from the years you are today, you will need a stick. A walking stick. By the time you conclude those 30 years, you will find that stick. And you won't need to look for it. You will find it there. And then you hold it. And it will help you. He knows that you need school fees. And yet you're, no long, you're not yet in need of it. 
You're not yet married. You're not yet married. But because he knows that you will marry, or you will get married, and then give birth, those children, they will need to go to school. He does not expect you to be worried of school fees. He expects you he expects you to involve yourself in his will. In seeking after his kingdom and his righteousness. After doing that, he will give you the promises. And everything else will follow you. You need patience. Praise the Lord. God can give you a job and that job pays you but it is not what you want. But what makes you think that this is not the job I want is because of the desire in you. When you just need a kind of grace that comes from God to sit in your heart and then that, that 100,000 will be enough and that one million will be enough when the 200,000 will be enough you just need a grace in your heart you need Christ to sit in your heart when he will sit in your heart you will know if I earn 100,000 what should I eat what should I put on? And where should I reside? Come Praise the Lord. That desire in your heart it shows you that you have to dress like so and so and you must sleep in this kind of place and you must eat that. And then pride disturbs you and yet what you have you just need to be patient with it you just need to humble yourself if you're able to eat mokene, eat it with joy and endure and the Lord will raise the standard slowly and then you start adding some and in mokene you add some uh, the other time you were eating boiled mokene but now you, add, you get some eggplant and then you add some little oil and then you will get money to buy now fish for 2000 and then a time comes that when you want liver you slaughter a full cow it takes patience amen all the people that have got wealth in their own way go and look at them whenever you want to get material wealth at the speed of the world you cannot maintain your relationship with God every time you want to get wealth at the speed of the world know that your relationship with God is dead but if you want to keep this relationship with God you need Christ praise the Lord he is the one we need Christ when he speaks of himself he speaks of himself at a level of a mustard seed when he was saying that the kingdom of God can be likened unto a mustard seed he was comparing to himself that I you see you don't need the full me but just a small portion of me in a size of a mustard seed put it in you it has strength to become big if it comes to a fertile ground a which has been plowed well and after working on your life and then that seed is there 
However small it may be. It will sprout. It will become big. And consume your entire life. Amen. Praise the Lord. In this prayer and fasting, you need Christ. The seed which is like a mustard seed to enter within you. Everything that was disturbing you, you will see what happens. Life will move on when it is easy. Things, material wealth, they have destroyed many. There are people I knew and they were promising. They had reached somewhere. But this spirit of the love of wealth, loving wealth, they no longer have time for God. They no longer have time to attend church. Even when you seek for them, you don't find them. When they come to church, it is like they've come for a show. He sits at the back. And you look at him and you say, Oh, what a pity. I wish he knew what he has. And yet he just needs patience. You may even have gotten a car today. And you have the house. But your relationship with God, the call upon your life, have you surrendered it because of a mere car? Which is going to perish tomorrow? Have you given up the mystery that God placed upon your life? Because of a mere house. Come on, Praise the Lord. Saul. Saul. He was anointed. To be king. As he was seeking for the donkey, the greatest treasure they had at home. And God put upon him a treasure, the source of treasure, to be the king of Israel. And every treasure of Israel was in his hand. By the time they anoint him amidst people, they were looking for him and he was nowhere. Someone and someone asked God, Did you lie to me? And he said that he is there hiding. Saul has been anointed to be king. But he has gone to hide in things thinking he is not contented that the kingdom he has got will make him to attain any wealth he wants. Praise the Lord. That thing which God had given you it has all your riches in it. Whatever you desire to reach at it is carrying it. That is what you need to hold. And you embrace. And you take care. And the time comes. And then it will manifest. The riches will come at your feet. All the glories you are seeking for. And in anything. Praise the Lord. Let me also tell you this. Today we men are denying you. You want to marry. But everyone you call runs away. When this manifold. Which God gave to you. You will go in prayer and fasting. When everyone is on you. Praise the Lord. You need to be patient. And do the will of God. And then whatever he promised. You will attain it. But you cannot be patient. Asaf said I almost backslid. He almost. His feet to backslide. Seeing the speed at which men were prospering. They were rich. They even have more than what they need. 
But the choir master of the kingdom of Israel, the man who was training the choir that was singing in the temple of David, for him he had nothing that he almost boxed until when God took him to the sanctuary it is until he went to the sanctuary and then he got something which sat in his heart and it changed its, his perspective Perception. And he also saw the end of these ones he was desiring. And then he was calm. Go and read at the Psalms of Asaph. They are, his Psalms are God. They encourage and give hope. But he first went to the sanctuary. You need to reach the sanctuary. And you get that seed called Christ. Whatever was disturbing you from it, from it, it, will it will remain shouting. But you will feel it within you that it, this is not what I need at the time. And because he has authority over them, he will command them. You go away. The Bible says he will command the four corners of the earth to bring riches to you. And then he will tell them, do not say no. In this praying and fasting, pray that God gives you this seat Christ. Pray that God takes you to his sanctuary and you get Christ in your heart. Victory is there. Nothing will overcome us again. Praise the Lord. This one that I'm speaking of. He was in the garden. As the tree of life. He was the tree of life. Whenever Adam would partake of it. Life would increase in him. He is the one who was in Noah's ark as an image. And salvation was in him. He. Is the one who was in the burning bush. And Moses met him. He is the one who led Israel. Right from Egypt. When he reached the Red Sea. He commanded it to part that my people can go away. When you enter him within you, whatever was before you as the Red Sea, he will part it. He is the one you need. Him. Is the one who was in the image of Isaac. The son of Abraham, the elder son the son of the covenant when God was choosing him to be an offering that Abraham had to be and he's the one who was in the image of the sheep that was exchanged for Isaac that Abraham slaughtered him he was, the, he was Moses' tabernacle that Moses' tabernacle he was all the functions that happened in the tabernacle they were representing him he is the one who used to serve Israel he was, he was the one who would lead them as the pillar of clouds and, and also as the pillar of fire in the night from him came the manna that Israel would eat he was the water from the rock and he was the rock which followed them wherever they would go they found a rock bringing water wherever they would go they would find the rock he is the one I'm introducing to you he walked with Israel when he was just on the side 
in this generation he decided to enter within us let us end with the scripture in Ezekiel 36 he speaks he speaks that I'll bring you back to myself. 36. Verse 24. Nimba Erandi bawa no mutima omujja nente ko muoyo omujja munda mumwe erandi jo mutima ogwejinja mu biri gwa mwe nemba wo mutima ogwenyama erandi te ko muoyo gwange munda mumwe nemba tambuliza mateka agange era mikwate misango jangu muri jikola amen Ezekiel chapter 36 from verse 24 for i will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land then will, then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean. From all your filthiness and from all your idols, I will cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. <laughs> Verse twenty-eight. And you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. First of all, he's going to gather us from the heathen. A sign that he will first take away that sin. He's going to first take away the sin that is disturbing The other thing, and every spot that was brought by that nation, he is going to sprinkle clean water upon us. And all the filthiness will be taken away. And afterward, he will put his spirit within us. His spirit is himself. And he will take away the stony heart. That heart which was not repentant, which was hardened in sin, when we enter Christ, he will break asunder that heart. If it needs to be plucked out, he will pluck it out and put in a new heart, a heart of flesh, and give us his spirit and walk in his ordinances when it is his service when you're no longer doing the law of God by your strength but you're moving by his strength we need him he is the one we need he is the one who put on flesh uh, from a virgin uh, he entered by the word of God and put on flesh and that flesh was named Jesus the image of God seated in him called Christ he came to uproot whatever whatever that God didn't plant praise the Lord May God bless you with those words.